So based on the recommendation of a friend of mine, I picked up this Katri, Katri, whatever, uh, I believe it's a CO01D DMR radio. It's kind of a strange little radio. It is definitely, looks like it's using repurposed parts from, uh, like here, check this antenna connector out here. Got like a strange sort of unusual connector almost like they it looks like the company makes other random sort of like a children's radios and stuff but they must be branching out but that's just like a I mean it's there's no ground looking connection <laughs> even on the uh, on the antenna there but from my testing it actually works um, I don't get amazing range out of it. Um, I don't know if that's just because of the weird antenna or if it's not particularly powerful. I don't really have a way to test it considering the connector. But um, I will set it up and show you how I programmed it and uh, maybe set up like a, an echo thing so that we can hear it actually working. So uh, I'll do that next. Alright so after you've downloaded the uh, software and extracted it, you'll have this file called octus.cps.exe and you've run that and it will bring up this program here. Um, this main screen here, you don't have to pay too much attention to. The first one here, just under device information. Um, if yours defaults to Chinese language first, this drop down right here is for language and you could select English. And then um, as you go through the settings here, the basic one you want to do is set your call sign here and your radio ID. And your radio ID can uh, be applied for, let's see here, I think it's just radioid.net. Uh, yeah, that's correct. So you go on here and you verify that you are in fact who you are and they will assign you a radio ID number. And that's what you would put here. This one's mine. Um, the other settings here look like they're all default. Um, we shouldn't have to change any of these. But the first step here you can go to is zone, and I've renamed this home zone. This is kind of like a list of channels that you want to group together in some sort of logical sense. For example, if you uh, have a house in one city and then a cabin somewhere else, you could have the main one that you're at the most default and put all the channels that are nearby there in that one and then have a second zone for another location and you could put them there. Um, the f radio itself isn't quite as advanced so it, as you choose a default zone so you'd set select it as current zone here and that would be the one that would be written to the radio. So um, if you're traveling around you would just write the new one to the radio and go from there. It only has 16 channels, so I, I've only used 12 of them, but it's also a limitation, especially since each one of the, the talk rooms and everything will take up a whole channel by itself. Um, so there's that. So if you think of this kind of like in the traditional sense, like your radio and your channels, and that's the screen here. So then from there, if you go into channels here, this is more of like a screen where you put in repeaters and the, the information about them in particular. These, if you click edit on here, oh shoot, that's not going to fit in. Um, all right. So you have the frequency that you're going to transmit to and you're going to receive from. It's flip-flopped, so I would watch that. And um, there's some other information here we'll get to in a second, but basically each one of these channels will go into the zone over here on the right. 
So whichever one you choose and however you order them, you put them in one at a time, they're going to show up in the radio in this order, not in the order over here. Alrighty. So each one of these that I have has a, since it's digital, you can receive multiple channels on them, multiple talk groups. So talk groups are like, um, you know, you have one radio stream, one radio connection, let's say, and you can receive multiple talk groups and the radio will only pick out the ones that you've selected to receive. So even if someone else is using the repeater and they're in other talk groups, you won't hear those. You'll only hear the ones that you've selected that you want to receive. So under here, under there's on the left, receive group. I've put in receive groups for each of the, the ones I want to receive. So uh, the repeater I will connect to has these two as the primary and secondary. And uh, when, when I'm on a channel that has this receive group, I only want to hear this one for number one and this one for number two. And then, you know, there's a few other ones that I use. So each one of these items in the receive group is a contact. Now, um, you'll hear them called like uh, talk groups or uh, uh, other other names, but you put those in under contacts here. And these are just the name and the number that goes with them. So the contact, the talk group, you'll, you'll create them and then you'll put them inside of a receive group. So it, it might be easier just to have one contact, one receive group with that contact in it. And then you go and you have one channel with that receive group in it. And then the frequencies for the repeater here. And then depending on the repeater you're on, when you look it up online, it'll tell you like a time slot. Um, oftentimes what will happen is time slot one, if you're on like a brand, brand Meister repeater, will be like the, the open one you can use for various things. And number two will be like a local only. So it's important to look up and see what the repeater, I guess the repeater owner has decided for that. But um, so here we're going to receive uh, number one, group number one, which if you remember is right over here, receive group number one. So if anything transmits on this MI5 st statewide here and I'm on this channel, I should hear it. And now when I transmit, I also want to transmit to that same place so that they can hear me. So I, I, I've selected here under the contacts that I want to send back to that one. Now you'll have noticed that that's only one of the talk groups and I have over here in contacts, I have two. There's number one and number two. And over here, I have it set up for receive group number one and number two. And then over here, that's where the second one is. So I've used up two of my channels by using those two talk groups on this one repeater here. That's why I have one and two. Now it just so happens that this repeater has these two talk groups here number one and here number two it uses slot number one and number two so this one doesn't have any sort of like a, a public one to connect to other talk groups it's just one is their number one and two is their number two and they're directly connected to each slot and then if you see here the contact for this second one here is the second contact from this list over here so um, you can also program simplex channels. The uh, configuration here is a lot simpler. It's more like what you're familiar with. And these ones, you only have to program on this screen, the repeater part of it, and then add it to your zone as one of the channels. So those ones are really easy. Alrighty, so we got the receive groups there. We got the channels. Okay, 
So then you'll see here, I'll go down, uh, where to go? All right, so this is a, a repeater that has two talk groups on it, or uh, two, um, what are they called? Two time slots. And this is an example of what I was saying where one time slot is open for, for use to connect to different places and one is a local only. So I'll look at the local only one first. Um, you'll see it's on time slot two, which is what they told me on their, uh, on the website. If you looked it up on like repeater book. So I've set it to time slot two, the receive group here. I have set to number four, which if I go over to receive groups here, now these are all the different channels, I guess the different contacts that I would like to hear on that receive group since, um, they're all checked. I should on this, on all these channels, let's see here, since they're all checked on there, even though I only set the same group here for, for, for all three of those should, would technically, I could hear them if I'm on any of these stations. So I suppose if you wanted to make it easier for yourself to program them, you could check these all off and, and use them all on the same, uh, receive group. But the problem with that is if someone happens to be in this North America group here while you're talking on this one, you should be able to hear both even though when you transmit, it's only sending to the one. So it's convenient if you want to listen to two talk groups at the same time and keep track of them if you want to switch over to another one to talk to somebody. But it also means that you'll, you'll have some overlap if you happen to be using one when someone else is using another. But these ones are both set to slot number one, like they said, and then the contact, this is who I want to transmit to, and then this is where I'm receiving from. So then that one's set that way, and that one's set that way. So whenever I connect to transmit to these, the repeater should automatically go through the internet and connect to one of these channels and then start to receive, and I could send to that. Now this one is set up a bit like the ones that we did up here where slot number two is always the local group which i have down here and um, this number is listed on their website and then the receive group i i'll receive everything that's in receive group number four which is over here again so it's kind of kind of complicated because you have to go through and you know you think of this as your group of channels that you've made and then as far as the channels are concerned, it's your list of basically repeaters, but you also have to tell the repeat or tell what from the repeater you want to receive and what you want to send to the repeater or where you want to want the repeater to send it to, I guess. So what you want to receive from the repeater and what you want to tell the repeater to send to. So you're sending to slot one, you're sending to this contact, and you should set it up so this contact, you would receive it. So that's over here in the receive group there. So you've got those checked. In theory, you could check all of these. I probably wouldn't recommend it because you might hear a lot of overlap, but you could, for example, set up one channel here so I have these two set up and these always go to either this contact or this contact. So in theory, I could set up a third channel that receives both of those at the same time. And then when I hear one of those that are active and I'm, I can go over to the, the correct one and, uh, initiate contact with them. I have, I don't believe that there is a good way to determine which one they are coming from though, because the radio has no display. So you will kind of have to hope that they uh, continue speaking when you, uh, when you try for it, or I guess uh, you could talk on both of them. So, um, other than that, I haven't really configured a lot of the other stuff. Uh, encryption isn't particularly relevant to amateur radio. 
Um, the DMR settings here are probably good default. And um, I mean the roaming list, yeah, we won't use that either. But at this point, we are probably ready to write to the radio. Now, it's probably a good idea with just about any radio, I guess, to read the original default and save it away somewhere. Uh, I know that some of these radios, if you do not have the original and you mess up one of your files, you will not be able to program or create a new one and start from scratch. You have to start with the baseline of whatever the default was. So you'd save the, the copy from the radio first and store it somewhere, and then you select Write to Radio. Now it uses a uh, regular Baofeng sort of you know, the two pin cable. Um, mine is currently not connected, but it would be on COM7. So you select the correct COM port and you could leave the password in the sub package default and then you click OK and it'll write to the radio. Um, it'll be the same thing. The radio has to be on and um, it'll turn the radio off after it's completed its programming. So then you can disconnect the, ta uh, disconnect the cable and turn it on again. And from there, you should be able to switch to your channel and try for a contact. So um, in the next step, I will load the radio up and see if I can uh, do that. All right, since I'm kind of recording this at an odd time, I have created here a channel that has a contact called Parrot. And on Brandmeister Systems, the Parrot uh, just parrots back exactly what you said. So I went into contacts here and created a parrot contact and you set it to individual call. And this allows you to send like, a, I guess, direct contact, uh, contact people directly instead of uh, to a group. So um, in theory, you could put in like someone's uh, exact number and then contact them directly. But I've put in the parrot there, it's 990. And then I go down to channels and I have the parrot channel and I put in the frequency information the same as these ones that are right here because I know that's a Brandmeister system. And I have it set to slot one because that's the one that's for, uh, I guess, public use. And I've left the receive group blank because we're just doing like a direct contact. And I've set the, the contact to this parrot 990 and it should be good to go now I got to remember to go up to the zone here and previously I didn't have that one on the list and now I have one in the middle for optional channel I could select that and a batch add items and now I have channel 13 here is that parrot station so now I have my radio set up here I'll plug it in and actually write to the radio. I, now that you'll see, I since I got the cable in, I got my uh, COM7 showing up. And then I confirm. All right, and it'll take a little bit to write it out to it. And off it goes. So it turns off the radio, and I can unplug it. And now I'll come back with some video and we can uh, see if it repeats back our stuff to us. So be right back. All right, since I don't really get much in the way of range with this thing, I'm gonna have to try it by the window here. So let's see if we can uh, connect into that parrot and have it repeat back what, what we've said, so. Whiskey Zero, Alpha Sierra Mike, testing. Whiskey Zero, Alpha Sierra Mike, testing. Seems to be working. <laughs> 